Good afternoon. Welcome to the tea table. I'm so happy you've joined me today. We're sitting here by my cozy fire and we're going to talk about a very special day that's coming, October 31st. And the man sitting behind me up above, one of my heroes in history, it's his day. And it's called Reformation Day. Yes, October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther went to the church and nailed the 95 theses on the church door. That was 95 reasons and thoughts that he wanted to see changed in the church. He chose that day because the town was full of people. October 31st on the church calendar was called All Hollywood Eve because the next day, November 1st, was All Saints Day. And it was a day that people would fast and pray and remember the saints that had gone before. And so October 31st was kind of like a Mardi Gras, a big happy celebration in the middle of the town. Everybody was there. He thought this is a perfect time to make my statement. Well, we need to back up a little bit. But first, if you haven't gotten your tea yet, please pause and get your tea and I'll be waiting for you. I have a beautiful tea set for you today. And for you who like a treat, I have a little bran muffin. And I have a set that is gold and white. And on my tea tray for autumn splendor, I put a little pumpkin. Well, I need to put the cup on too. Let's see, this is the cup. There we go. So, I thought this was appropriate for thinking of that period of time in 1517. We're coming right at the end of the Renaissance and moving right into what we call Reformation, which literally started that day. I'm going to pour out my wonderful hot tea. And a little splash of milk. And this is my little, I just put this little brown pumpkin, he's so sweet, on my tray. Let's test out. Mmm, delicious. I have Johann Sebastian Bach playing today because he came 150 years after Martin Luther and he took pure Lutheran theology and put it into music. He's called by many Lutherans the fifth apostle. He literally wrote thousands of pieces of music and even some of it has been lost but he took that glorious freedom in Christ and joy that Martin Luther experienced that we're going to talk about. So to understand the significance of a man like Martin Luther, a monk, Augustinian monk, going to the middle of the town and doing something so radical, unheard of in that day, the whole then known Western world and other parts of the world were under Rome and under the Pope and the Christian world was all unified under one church called the Mother Church. Well, the sad thing was things had become very corrupt. There had been certain things happened that 
were not meant to happen. And many people felt bad about it. There were people all around in different areas uh, trying to, we call them precursors to the Reformation. One was Savonarola in Florence. He was the famous preacher. He was a monk and he was a, a priest and he was trying to tell people that salvation could be by grace. Well, he was burned at the stake. Then there was another, uh, John Huss, up in Czechoslovakia. And he had discovered freedom in Christ and he preached it, burned at the stake. So these men were called precursors. Well, Martin Luther knew about these men, but he had no desire, or he was not a rebel. He was really a very devout, devoted monk. And his backstory is, as a young man, he was walking through the woods and a big thunderstorm came. And it was terrible. It was no place to hide. All the branches were breaking and he thought, he would die. And he cried out, Saint Anne, Saint Anne, save me. Now, Saint Anne is the mother of Mary in the Bible, the mother of Jesus. So Saint Anne is the grandmother of Jesus. And she was a saint that people would pray to. And he cried out with his whole heart and he said, God, if you save me and let me live, I will give my life. I will devote my life to you. Now, Martin Luther was a very good student. He had been in the St. Thomas School and through his beautiful singing voice, he got a scholarship and he was learning Greek and Hebrew and Latin. You had to know those languages to read any form of book. There was no written German at that time. Well, his father, Hans and his mother, they were very devout, but they had wanted him to become a lawyer, especially his father, and had worked in his mill and scrimped and saved his money to send him to university, which was a very big deal. Only a few people got to go to school in those days. Remember, I've talked to you before, before the Reformation, the world looked like a chessboard. You had the power and money with the king and the queen. Then they had the bishops, they had power. Then you might have a knight. He got a little bit of power through defending his king. But the majority of the people were pawns. They were under, they didn't even own land. They had to have a, a lord over them. It was the feudal system. So this is the world Martin Luther's in. So to have a son go to university and become a lawyer, that was like hope for the family to go to the next level. But Martin said, Father, I am sorry to disobey you, but I must give my life to God. And the only way he knew was to join a monastery. So he joined the Augustin, Augustin Monastery, which is named after we call him St. Augustine. Remember Augustine? There are different monasteries. There's the Benedictine, named after Benedict. There's the Franciscan, named after St. Francis. But he was in the Augustinian. Very strict order. And he followed every rule. He would read his Bible. He would pray. He would go to Mass. He would say the Rosary. He would confess his sins. He even went to Rome and climbed on his knees and they almost became bloody, trying to do what you call penance. Penance was pay for my sins, but he couldn't get peace. Uh, he would fast and he would go to confession every day and confess for things that we thought we wouldn't even think were sins. Well, this old priest that was there was very concerned about Martin Luther. And he said, Martin, you're going to drive yourself mad. You need to read the scriptures. So he started taking, because he knew the, the Greek and the Hebrew and the Latin, he could read the scriptures. And he started reading. 
and he got to the book of Romans and he found a verse that said, and it jumped off the page, the just shall live by faith. Well, he thought by faith, not by my works. Then he found another verse, by grace are you saved and that not of yourself, lest any man should boast. But my grace is sufficient for thee. So he, he, God, is it true that salvation is a gift and it's your grace and it's by my faith? Light bulbs went on. Overnight, he was a new person. He started devouring the scripture and he said, he started looking around and he said, I've got to preach this to the people. And the, the priests, other monks said, no, no, Martin, you're going to start a revolution. He said, I can't hold my light under a bushel. So he started preaching and he got, of course, got in trouble. Well, the Pope heard about it and sent letters, stop him from preaching. Well, they couldn't stop him. So they called what they called a diet of worms. What that means, the diet was a, a name, a Latin name for a council. It meant that he had to go before the church and, and explain why he was doing what he was doing. And Worms was a town in Germany that still exists. And that's why you'll hear the famous Diet of Worms. That's what it was. Well, he went before the council and they finally said, Martin Luther, if you will renounce this heresy, they called it heresy, that means false belief. If you will renounce this heresy, we will let you go. And then he stood up and he thought, this is my moment, I will die for this. He, he was willing to be a martyr. He said, I cannot recant. Here I stand, I can do no other. Bong, that was like an earthquake. The gavel went down and he was excommunicated. So when he left, he went off on his horse and he thought, I'm going to probably die. But he heard horse hoofs behind him and it was a group of soldiers, but it was really his friends dressed like soldiers. They grabbed him and they took him and everyone thought that he had been put in jail. But they hid him in the Vortburg castle. And Martin didn't waste time. He sat in the castle for months, but his brain was so great. He said, I will translate the Bible and create a German written language. Up to that time, there was no written German. He is given the credit for the written German language that we have today in Germany. And so he carefully translated the New Testament into German the language of the people. The Gutenberg printing press had just been made within the last 50 years in another city in Germany, Johann Gutenberg. So the printing press made it possible to take these Bibles he copied and print hundreds and thousands for the common man. Oh, wow, do you know that? That was a revolution. You could have, the chessboard exploded the people got the word of God and they realized God loves me. And the big one was the ground is level at the cross. Doesn't matter if you're a priest, a prince, a king, a pauper, the poorest child, the richest Lord, didn't matter. In God's eyes, everyone is the same. God loves everyone the same. It's really hard to get that, but it's true. God loves everyone the same. That's justice. And he looks on the heart. Wow. That empowered the common man. And out of the, the poverty of serfdom and feudalism emerges the middle class, the merchant class. And people start educating their children. And within gen several generations, the whole world is a different place. That's just a little bit of the fruit of the Protestant Reformation. But Martin Luther encouraged, he was a musician, 
He played the lute. He started writing songs. He said, why aren't we singing in church? At that time, only choirs were singing and mostly in Latin. It would be nuns or priests or a few children. And the people would come and hear the sermon in Latin. They, many of them didn't understand the sermon, but they would see the stained glass windows and that was telling the story of Jesus and birth and death and the disciples, kind of like a TV in that, mod, in that ancient time. So suddenly Martin Luther is preaching in the language of the people. They're getting Bibles and they're learning to read and write. He writes a catechism, a famous catechism. It's called the Small Catechism. People think it's for young people because today, if you go to a Lutheran church, you will be confirmed around the age of 14, middle, middle school age, and you will go for a one or two year study with the pastor and you'll study the small catechism, which explains the 10 commandments, the Lord's prayer, the beatitudes. It, it just gives you basic foundational Christianity. So, but he didn't create that for the children. He created for everyone, for the adults. He had to teach everyone. So the catechism, it's called being catechized. He told the pastors and he had a whole group of monks leave the monastery. Then he went and got the group of nuns from the nunnery and put them in fish barrels and brought, snuck them out, lined up the nuns, lined up the priests and said, now marry because they had been forbidden, they couldn't marry. He said, no, there's, we're gonna marry. We're gonna have, our ministers are gonna marry and have children and have a home. Well, Martin Luther had everybody else married off but himself and he said, well, I don't think I should marry because I'm expecting at any minute to die. He really thought he was gonna be a martyr. But there was a beautiful nun, Katarina, and she, um, said to him, she let him know that she liked him. And so he decided he would marry. And he married her and they had a most wonderful, loving marriage and family and children. And he played the lute and she sang and they would sing in the home. And he said, everyone write music. He wrote almost a thousand songs. He wrote the famous song, A Mighty Fortress Is Our God that Every good Lutheran church and every good Protestant church will sing this next Sunday. And I believe it's even sung in many Catholic churches because the Catholics have recognized there's harmony between all denominations because we all serve the same God. It was just a reformation that needed to happen. But um, so, he wrote the song Away in the Manger for his little son, Hans, who was named after his father, which reveals the tender heart Martin Luther had. He had a tender heart. He was strong. He had to be strong. He was fighting against everything for, to, to set people free. And within the period, short period of time, you had the most beautiful hymns written. Some of the most gorgeous hymns in the hymn book are 16, 1500, 1600. Those are really early. And then you have in the 17s, Johann Sebastian Bach. And he took many of Luther's songs and many of the songs that early uh, Lutherans had written and put them into his lovely cantatas and his um, beautiful oratorios. And um, Johann Sebastian Bach was an organist and he was required to write a new cantata every Sunday. Yes, every Sunday. So that's why we have so much Bach fabulous music. And do you know on every piece of music he signed to the glory of God? Te Deum Gloria, to the glory of God on the bottom of every piece of music. He knew that he was writing. He was taking that theology of, it's a gift. We don't have to work for it. We can receive God's love. It will change our life. 
And then out of that, we want to do what's right and follow God's ways. Yes, but we don't do it to earn our salvation. Because remember, we didn't create ourselves. God created us. And he wants to take care of us. So we basically just need to let him take care of us. Let him in. Well, that period of time, like I said, was coming right after um, Renaissance. And Renaissance was new life. You had the paintings, you had the writings, you had the books, you had the art, you had the music, and you had the clothing. And so I am dressed with a little bit of a Renaissance feeling. And I'm also thinking about in October and November, you have the beginning of the opera season. And I had the privilege of going to operas, especially when I was in Europe and everyone would dress up. It was such a fun place to go and dress up. And I remember one opera in Innsbruck, Austria. I was at the age of a student. So my friend and I, we could get student tickets and they were very reasonable. And we went to the Innsbruck Austria, uh, Opera in the middle of the week. It was, I think, a Tuesday night the people were dressed beyond anything I had ever, ever imagined. There were velvets, there were fur, there was tapestry, there was burgundy, there was forest green, every color and, and sparkles and design and just a beautiful, um, colorful tapestry. That's what it was, a tapestry of beauty. And everyone was so honoring of the opera and it was a beautiful evening. And I'm also dressed in brown, black, and gold, which I think are really nice colors for fall. I think we think of the golden leaves and now they're kind of dying more and more and you get these wonderful black trunks in the sunlight and the brown trunks sparkling together. And I love those, these tones. And I am getting ready to go to a wedding and I thought I need to wear something really special. So I'm thinking of maybe wearing this. And I thought, well, we'll combine it all with the tea table today. The wedding, the opera, the Reformation Day celebration of the end of uh, the Renaissance and the beauty of, I love the little saying, the glory of God is man fully alive and that's based on scripture reminds me of martin luther he said it doesn't matter if you are working in the kitchen peeling potatoes if you are making the bed if you are writing a piece of music if you are teaching a class if you are working the plow do all for the glory of god everything we do is worship that's what he is saying. And that gave that idea of the Protestant work ethic that we do everything with our best ability because we're not doing it just for men. We're doing this for God. Out of that came so much artistry. You study and the beautiful German language that the people got and they were reading and writing. And within two or three generations, they were moving up and taking the positions of the, um, the nobles and the lawyers and the doctors. And they were able to send their children to school. Martin Luther, he is the one who said, every child needs to be educated. Money should never be an issue. And he mandated free education for all school-age children and insisted upon it. And they started their schools and much of the modern university today even goes back to a lot of the ideas that Martin Luther had established in learning. And he felt so strongly that every child should be given an opportunity 
to learn some form of music. Bach always said, if children learn to sing praises to God, it will keep their souls clean. I thought that's so beautiful. I just love the heritage we have. And it spread into the northern countries, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Iceland, and England already had a Reformation and through the Anglican, went to Holland. Holland became a very colorful, free, powerful country. And Rembrandt, his art, Francis Schaeffer used to say, Rembrandt is the artistic picture of the Protestant Reformation because he started painting real people doing real things. The famous one with the girl pouring the pitcher of milk. Even having our tea here, pouring this cup of tea. This is, we have our tea. We share in fellowship for the glory of God. We clean our house. We go to the grocery store. We serve others tea. We serve others food for the glory of God. It gives life a deep meaning because there's the eternal picture. And I love the words of Jesus and it should be part of our tea table. He said, if you give a cup of cold water in my name, you've given it to me. Well, I think if you give water, why not give a cup of tea? Yes, do good. Well, for you who love my purses, I have a special purse. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna carry it to the wedding. Uh, you tell me what you think, if you have an idea. Should I carry this to the wedding? It's a wooden purse. It is so unique, it is so vintage. And this is how it opens, it has a clasp, Inside is like green felt, French green. And I think it might go with what I'm wearing. I don't know for sure. What do you think? Tell me if you have an opinion. You can put it in the comments. I think this is adorable purse. You could definitely take this to an opera. It almost could be any period of time. This is handmade little wooden purse, darling. I think I'll put it right here. Well, this has been so special to be together. I love our tea times and I really appreciate all of your comments. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'm getting more and more people and it's hard for me to know who to send it to. But if you're subscribed, let me know so I don't double send. And then also, please, if you think somebody you know would like the tea table, I do this to bring good news, to bring good fellowship, happiness, and joy. And to let people know that God loves them and that there is a purpose, there is a hope. And to find your gift and use it and if you liked it like it and push the notification bell and I love your comments I absolutely love your comments they are priceless to me so I am happy we are together and I hope you have a fabulous weekend enjoy all the rest of beautiful October going to put this little cup down and study study a little bit of Martin Luther there are so many good movies made of him documentaries that will give you so much more it's a big subject it's too big to cover in 30 minutes on a tea table I've just touched the highlights but there's so much fruit and flower I call it of the Reformation, what came out of it. The publishing of books, the writing of books, the writing of music, the writing of poetry, people, the emergence of the middle class, 
the emergence of just massive schools and education for all. Yes. Well, I'm going to come forward and I've lost my little click click. Somewhere in my house, I lost it. So I have to hand turn on and off, but it's all right. It all works out. So have you, any of you been writing poetry or songs or books or thoughts? Let me know. I would like to know what you're writing. I'm still writing. I've been writing several poems this last week. Maybe I'll share one with you next time. Okay, just remember the glory of God is man fully alive. Thank you so much. And don't forget your tea. God bless you.